Thanks for joining us for another episode of Nindy Nation, the podcast exclusively dedicated to independently developed games for the Nintendo Switch. I'm Jeff, and just as you can't have a Switch without two Joy-Cons, you can't have a Switch podcast without two hosts. So the ABXY to my up, down, left, right is Josh. Boom. Hey, Jeff. How's it going, Josh? <laughs> Pretty good. My arm is very sore, but I'm, I'm hanging oh, in there. Oh, do tell. I got some more ink. Yes. And no, it's not themed for Nindies, but Bioshock is one of my favorite series. So I got the Songbird right at the top there. So. And you guys, it looks dope. You have to yeah. you have to put a picture up on the uh, on the Facebook page and let people see it. Or you can follow me at minus the brand if you want to see it there too. So. Oh, plug in the Twitter right out of the gate. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Each week we're gonna dive into what we've been playing, what we think you should be playing, and in our second half we'll dive into the week's new releases and games on sale that you can't afford to miss. But wait, this week is a little different. Because now I'm going to pat myself on the back, but as I predicted, this morning Nintendo dropped a Nindy highlight video, and we cannot wait to jump in and tell you about the 16 games featured in today's video. But before we do that, Josh, what's been keeping your Joy-Cons synced this week? Well, Jeff, funny you should ask. I've been playing a few rounds of billiards with uh, Pool Panic. <laughs> And it's uh, quite the trip, I have to say. This isn't like your regular pool table uh, sport here. <laughs> Not just There's, the regular billiards, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, see, this one is its an adult swim game, so you can expect some wacky animations and everything. But what's neat about it is that the art style, well, is unique, first of all, but... The different balls that you try to hit in, you you play as the cue ball, okay? And then there's like this virtual stick that you use the thumbstick to pull back on. Then you push a button to like hit the ball. Okay. But the b balls you're trying to hit all have characteristics. Like some will run away. Some will do like <laughs> ballerina moves around you. Some will like charge at you. <laughs> so are the other balls like, like enemies? Like kind of or? It's kind of. They... There's environmental hazard like things like in one stage you might be in like a wood chopper shop okay. or you might be on like a tennis court <laughs> okay. randomly or something like Somebody that. Somebody dug yeah. a bunch of uh, pockets into a tennis court and and you're yeah. OK. Fair enough. And the, right. yeah, there's like there's a bunch of different scenarios and it's and you're trying to get all the balls in the holes like you wouldn't as you know. one would. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Do they try to like make a story out of it or like is there like any like storytelling in it? There's light story elements to it, but basically there is a world map that you can run around in, which I have to say has to be one of the best world maps in all of really? kingdom. Yeah, it's really neat how you interact with things, but and it's like a cutout sort of art style, which is really unique, but um, as you run around, you get to select different missions. And like I said, there, there's a bunch of different places you go. Like <laughs> it's insane. And you all, your goal is always to try to get all the balls in and get the eight ball in at the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a bunch of different scenarios. Like you can try to do it in the least amount of strokes or as fast as you can, or, and you can move the cue ball around wherever you want. So before it doesn't stay stationary, so okay. you can line up a shot before you actually try to get hit another ball in the hole and so, so I, I asked about the story because being from adult swim like is it funny are you i mean is it significantly funny are you chortling yeah, while you're playing it? it's funny there's no voice acting at all so basically you're just <laughs> they make grunts and groans and then you can tell by the different voice types like how they groan and stuff mm -hmm. what type of ball it is and <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a game you almost have to watch or just play you know it's just so unique and you know it's fun it gets real repetitive and it gets very hard the mm -hmm. later you get on because there's like oh my gosh there's well over a hundred levels really wow there's a, there's lot, a there. lot of content huh yeah but um yeah it's it was it was fun so that's really cool what else you been playing I'm going to hit on Iconoclast next. I mean, I was meaning to talk about this last week, but sort of skipped over it. 
because I've been playing so much stuff. But it's a game you should definitely shouldn't skip over if you're into Metrovanias and different gameplay mechanics and a pretty art style. Because it, it's sort of like similar to Owlboy. In yeah. A sense, the art style. Ooh, looks, talk dirty. Looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Music isn't as good as Owlboy, but. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you can't win them all. I mean, Iconoclast looks. It, it, if I remember, like it does the Metroidvania, but you, you are like you get other people in your party to get different abilities or something, or are you upgrading yourself. I, I forget there was something yeah, different you, about that. Well, you play as one person the whole way through. Okay, and um, as you're playing, you gain a wrench ability because in this time period, for some reason, mechanics aren't allowed because the government wants people to depend on them but anyway yeah you use this wrench for traversal and you can power it up to break certain walls later on and you can use it sort of like grapple around and as you upgrade it so it sort of has those tendencies like your traditional metrovania platformer there i mean there's combat she has a gun that you can upgrade to and then there's another character you play as later on but i mean it, it changes things up but you know yeah, Robin, who is the main character, I just she's better anyway. So and it feels good. I mean, I'm I'm looking at a video right now. It looks like it's good and smooth, and it's got like some big boss fights and little oh yeah anime cut tight scenes. gameplay. Yeah, it actually has a pretty deep story. Like really about <laughs> well, I mean, it seems know, like a cool oppression. premise. Yeah, yeah, it it is, it is. Yeah, is there any? Uh, I mean, after you finish the game, do you know if there's any, like, is there any kind of co-op or challenge modes or any idea about post-game stuff to do? Oh, as I'm watching the video, it just said completely new boss rush mode. So I guess there's yeah. that. Oh. Yeah, I haven't dabbled with that, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's really no multiplayer. But yeah, that, I mean, there's plenty of content there. Now, like I said, the art style is really awesome yeah it looks Pixel like oh boy yeah. yeah you're you're dead on right yep there. and then finally i'll hit on red's kingdom i think i said i was playing this last week yeah i think so. it's um it's so it's one it's um a puzzle game disguised as an adventure game so hmm. there's different stages you go in like most puzzle games you go from one section to the next but this is more like in your tradi traditional adventure sense, it's a sliding puzzle type of game. So in sliding puzzle games, what you do is you have a, like a character or a ball that'll roll and it'll just keep rolling until it hits something else. Mm -hmm. And then you roll it somewhere else and it'll roll until it hits another wall or something. And you're trying to make your way through certain environments that way around obstacles and hit switches to open doors. This one, though, is pretty neat because it actually has like a light story to it and has adventure components. This was um, a mobile title before it came to the switch, hmm. but it's really cute. It's uh, I mean, it's got that isometric view and the characters look really expressive. And I mean, every single screenshot I'm looking at it and I'm like, Whoa, I see collectibles and puzzles and enemies and stuff. This looks neat. Yeah. It's a neat little title. I mean, it's actually pretty big too, just cause, and it has a Metrovania tendency too, where you, gain new abilities to go further like there's places you can see that you can't get to yet mm -hmm. and then like i said if you want to make it harder for yourself you can try to collect all the nuts in each little room mm -hmm. i'm simplifying a little bit but um because this is obviously a full game based around it but it looks kind of like the puzzle segments from mario plus rabbits did you get that far in the game to do some of those sliding block puzzles i did not okay. that's a game i want to get back to <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about it before we hit record, but uh, yeah, that's that's an awesome game. Well, cool, man. Any, anything else on uh, Red's Kingdom? No, that's about it. I mean, if you're into puzzle titles that branch out a little bit just because this one ha actually has adventure elements to it, I definitely recommend it. Very cool. Um, we uh, Before I jump into my, my couple of updates for the week, uh, we've both been playing lots of dead cells. Josh was just telling me that he finally he finally got hooked on it. Uh, it's, yeah, the addictive nature has finally grasped me, and I it won't let go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I completely <laughs> fell off of everything that I was playing. I had to pull myself away from it today. If you guys, if you are listening to this podcast and you do not have dead cells, you need to get dead cells. It had, takes that roguelike tendency to it makes it into perfection. Like, that's how I feel. Like, just the steady progression you get, and you always feel like you're learning something or gaining something new. I mean, 
never a not too many moment. games make it yeah it's not too many games can nail that but <laughs> it nails the gameplay and that progression perfectly yeah yeah it does i uh i've found that there's been a couple of times that i've loaded up like a walkthrough to try to be like, okay, I need some tips or anything like that. And I would read a couple of tips and think none of this seems like anything I don't know. It all seems like stuff I've figured out so far. So then I stopped yeah. reading because I don't want to like, I don't know if there's a spoiler, but I don't want to screw anything up because I'm loving it so much. But then I'm finding yeah. that it's a blast to talk to other people about this game. Like, what's your build? Are you using grenades or traps? Or are you using, you know, like, can, here, let's do that real quick. What What's one of your favorite builds to use in the game? Actually, last night I was having great success with this, like, bow that shot off, like, ice beams. And then it had something like a little grenade that would come out at the top. I love the weapons that have that. I love when you get a shield that that shoots out the little grenade. I don't know if you've ever yeah. had one of those. Sorry, yeah, continue. yeah, but yeah, that's awesome. And then um, I had like an ice blast that was really nice for I would freeze enemies and then, you know, drop away and then just shoot them from a distance. Mm -hmm. I also had the traps that you could lay out, trap them. And this little saw blade thing that was really cool. Yes, that you like that goes horizontally. <laughs> yeah, that was really awesome, too. I mean, there's I'm not, I'm not near as far as you, but I'm sure there's some awesome stuff that I haven't discovered yet. I actually think I just unlocked the relic that gives me that bow and arrow, that like ice bow and arrow thing you were just talking about. So I actually think I have that waiting for me. But nice. I am a big fan. I'm I'm becoming more of a fan of the shovel. Have you used the shovel yet? The really long reaching <laughs> I have one. Not gain the shovel <laughs> it's uh it's fast it does a good three hit combo and um yeah it's just got really long reach without being too <laughs> slow no like and it's legit for stuff <laughs> uh no but it's a legit yeah. shovel you'll see there's a lot of huh. enemies in the later levels of the game once you get into the castle that use that weapon so i think that's when you start seeing it a lot more i have also i think the stock sword just feels so good that little sh 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 when you're doing yeah, the that combo yeah that, that is really neat. <laughs> yeah, I like those. I like yeah. that. I typically like to roll with an ice grenade and a turret of some kind. That way I can throw the turret down, get in, do some damage. When they start getting ready to fight back, I throw the ice grenade, freeze everybody. That, that's kind of been my go-to so far. And, and yeah, that ice blast, the little Hadouken ice blast thing is, yep. is sweet. <laughs> so nifty. Yeah. So, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm going to be saying this for a couple of weeks now probably, but you, you have to get Dead Cells. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the other stuff that I've been playing, I asked the Facebook group a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you guys decided that I should play some Bomb Chicken, and I got it, and I'm about halfway through the game so far. And what I've found is it is a competent, fun, and unique game. Um, so you're this, like, genetically mutated chicken. It's a side-scrolling 2D platformer where the only thing you can do is crap out a bomb. And then once said bomb is on the ground, you can either, like, kick it side to side or you just use them to infinitely raise yourself up. So your method of, like, if you have to jump over a, a gap... You just have to know how many bombs to stack up and then walk off. My only real complaint is that everything is a one-hit kill. As you progress through the game, you get life and health and one-ups, and so you'll have four hearts in the top left corner of the screen. You get hit, you lose a life. That heart is your ability to just restart from that screen. When you get a game over, so if you make four mistakes you have to start the whole level all over again. And there's about 30 levels in the game. That was really frustrating. The whole time I was just thinking, come on, why can't this be like Celeste? Why can't you just get me right back in? Maybe I feel like a newbie or, or something, but I feel like at this point, it's a preference thing. I don't want my time wasted like that. Yeah, and games that don't allow you to jump also bother me. <laughs> Bionic Commando was okay. I know, no, One. that's I was about to mention, I didn't even care for Bionic Commando. Ooh. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, I know. Boo that man. No, you're you're allowed. I mean, I was like seven years old. <laughs> Army dude with grappling hook. That game was awesome. <laughs> but uh, but bomb chicken yeah. is cool. I I really it's on sale for half off right now. I think it's nine bucks, and I think it is 
every bit worth nine bucks. If uh, I watch a video, if it looks like fun, watching a quick video, you'll know what you're getting yourself into. And if it seems good to you, then I would say go for it. If I had to give it a score, it would be like right at that 8.0. It's a great game. It's great. If it is your bag, you'll love it. If it's not your bag, I don't know that's going to convince you, but, uh, but I think it's good. I also played Unexplored, and I feel like there's a... Is there a uh, subtitle to that game? Unex oh, no, it's just Unexplored Unlocked Edition. Yeah. This game is not bad, but it feels <laughs> like a beta Windows 98 game to me. Like, it is so much a PC game built for a mouse and keyboard ported to the switch without much changes for for example um it's a top-down game it looks like the older zelda games kind of um very fluid motion randomly generated levels etc cetera, etc cetera. lots of roguelike aspects to it where you can get some permanent upgrades but if you die you lose everything but you, you move around the screen and your primary secondary weapons are mapped to l and r and then if you push any of the face buttons on the controller, A, B, X, Y, it brings up menus that cover, like, no kidding, 80% of the screen. <laughs> and then you just have to, like, navigate. So, anyways, the, the interface is just atrocious. Um, it, it is. It's absolutely terrible. But Oh, you've been playing it, too? <laughs> yeah, I've been playing it. Okay. I just, I, I just can't. I couldn't make it any further. Yeah. Like, I, I it's... It's like you said, it's not a bad game. It's just not what I want in that type of dungeon crawling experience <laughs> at all. Did you find <laughs> that the actual combat was just like unbelievably slow? Yeah, it's unbelievably slow and it's hard. Yeah. But I guess they even the developers had to come out and say this, that you need to. It's like a twin stick shooter, so you need to play it like that because I guess some people weren't playing it the right way <laughs> well in most twin stick shooters when you use the fire button the thing you're controlling goes pew 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 <laughs> not like this game where you click the button and it goes stab and then you wait seven seconds and it's like stab. yeah you have to wait yeah for everything. so <laughs> you know i would be willing to bet that if you could get into this game and jump right into like i've played it for five hours you know show me all the perma gear that i've gotten and stuff like that I bet it would be pretty cool, but that upfront grind and the difficulty curve with how obtuse the game is. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't want to say it's bad, but there's so much other good stuff on the Switch right yeah, now to play. It just takes too much time. <laughs> hey, to get going. speaking of other good games coming up on the Switch. What is that, Jeff Way? Yes. This morning, <laughs> we were all treated to a uh, wake-up call from Nintendo's UK YouTube channel, who posted a, what, 20-minute video outlining 16 Nindies, many of them we've heard of before, but getting some more details behind them, release dates for some, and we got a couple of shadow drops as well. If you're looking at the list, Josh, you want to start at the top and we'll alternate through them? Sure. Um, uh, first, I'll hit on Night Call. That was the first one they showed. And this one looks really cool because it has like a noir setting, black and white. And it sort of reminds me of Lux Obscura, which was a match three type of game. Only this one is totally adventure. And you're, well, from what I can tell, it looks like you just, it just takes place in a cab the whole time. And you're trying to solve some type of mystery. Um, I'm not sure if it's a murder mystery, but you I guess you interrogate the people that are in your car like you're maybe a taxi driver. And yeah, I like I like the art style. I the art style is neat. very cool of it. Um, it's yeah. developed by Raw Fury. I don't know if they uh, how much other they've developed. Um, but yeah, it definitely plays out like that point and click noir style um interrogation thing that's coming out uh, early next year which often yep. means expect it in the summer <laughs> <laughs> um i want to hit on monster boy and the cursed kingdom uh this is the sequel to wonder boy and wonder girl and it's a gorgeous side scrolling um action adventure game i thought wonder boy was a little tough but it was 
beautiful and fun and incredibly well produced. It comes out November 6th and I cannot wait for this game. Um, I feel like yeah. I feel like Wonder Boy that that game that came out a couple of months ago or a while back that that game version 2 would be exactly what I wanted out of that game. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I agree cuz I um I played Wonder Boy and I thought like you it was a great game but it was sort of obtuse in level designs, but this one it looks like a natural progression and the way you transform looks awesome. Yeah, it does. I, th- some of that art style, I am surprised it's on the switch. Like it looks amazing, <sighs> man. Yeah. It looks so fluid. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. It's just like a cartoon that's come to life. Mm-hmm. It really does. Amazing. And next we have the guardians between and this one. I like your description. <laughs> it looks weird. Cool. Puzzle solving. Fez and Captain Toad had a baby. <laughs> yeah, that, that explains it pretty well, actually. I like, or sort of like Monument Valley, it looks like it plays tricks with your mind and how you move the stage around, and you're trying to guide these two people through the stage. Um, like I said, I don't really have much to say about it, but it looks pretty neat, and it's coming out September 20th, so that's pretty soon. Mm-hmm. One that uh, we're both, excited for uh streets of rogue and the the <laughs> not rage no not rage rogue. but if you look at the logo it looks just like streets of rage's logo yeah. uh yeah. this game is made by the voxel angels no it's not that's guardians between this game is made by tiny build um it looks to me like a zombies ate my neighbors if that rings any bells for anybody from you know <laughs> mid late 16 bit but it's got that top-down uh, type uh, brawler feel to it, but it, but it, other, th- other than the fact that it's top-down instead of side-scrolling, it looks just like a Streets of Rage game that can be infinitely replayable. Yeah, yeah, I, I really like the art style. It looked like there was so much going on at once, mm-hmm. and then there's all these different games. Like some of the characters like grew super huge, and there's one that dashed through walls and. It looks pretty chaotic, actually. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you, it looks like there's tons of characters. Yeah, it just looks like they got a good formula. They put a million variables into it. Do we know when that one's coming out? I think that was for just Q1 2019, if I remember correctly. That sounds so, about right. Next, we have Bad North, and this is actually this is developed by Raw Fury, and it's. It can't. It's coming out today, so you can buy it. It's one of those stealth releases. Yep. Um, we saw this at E3. They and so basically, you're trying to defend your island from like Viking invaders, and there's. It looks like there's a lot of strategy that's involved, a lot of tower defense. So if that's your thing, um, yeah, it looks like fun though. I mean, how you set up the turrets and you know, make sure that. <laughs> your island stays safe so yeah it lo- that's out now it looks a lot like uh, final fantasy tactics but i kind of got a vibe that it might play a little bit more like kind of like mushroom wars or something where it's a little more did- yeah, yeah that's that's what i thought too yeah, yeah it looked to you like it was more real time not ne- not really turn-based yeah exactly mm-hmm. like maybe you move your your certain groups around the field and then you try to flank the enemy or something like that so yeah um, we got uh, three updates from 11-Bit Studios. Uh, they've got three games. Uh, the first one is Moonlighter, and my notes are Zelda-like, characters look like Owlboy, I'm down. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> this is a game right up your alley. Yeah, th- this game looks Perfect pretty cool. I don't, I don't know much else about it. Have you heard much about this game? Actually, I have it for the PS4, so I oh, can Oh, it's already out. Oh, it. tell me yeah, It's bit. out. doesn't come out until, what does it say? Yeah, well, you don't fall. So, nebulous release date. But yeah, it's basically, if you're, you know, the shopkeepers that sell the adventurer's weapons, well, you are playing the shopkeeper, and what you do you have your own shop so you go into dungeons at night when no one else is exploring to earn gold and find new metals and stuff then you can go make weapons you collect weapons then you sell them and then you can make the price whatever you want so as your customers come in 
they can you can actually try the game more money through them and if they don't like a price then they'll let you know or they might try to steal something from you then you got to confront them and yeah it's a really neat premise so there's more in in the buying and selling than you're not just like setting prices and then letting it play out there's actually like interactions when people are coming in the shop and stuff yeah that yeah, there's actual interactions. Like, if they don't like a price, they'll try to haggle you for it or, you know, let you know. I guess that they could try to steal. They might try to <laughs> talk down your price so you, you can either stay put or... Yeah, there, it's just a lot, lot going on. And then you can just close the shop whenever you want if you want to go, you know, back into the dungeon to earn more. That sounds so, really cool. I, yeah, I like that grind. pretty free-forming. Yeah. Um, the, the next one from 11 bit studios is, uh, coming out in November, um, an older title, this war of mine. Now you're familiar with this game, right? Haven't you played this? Um, I haven't played it, oh, okay. but it looks pretty cool. It's very, I think I got a like PS plus or something. Yeah. Like I think it was on one of the, one of the PlayStation or Xbox free games, but it's a side scrolling, slower paced, very dark gritty and i feel bad that i can't think of it but i think it's actually based on like a real conflict that's happening okay. right now y- you be. are just a normal person in a city that has been ravaged by war and so the whole point is trying to show you the um how visceral it can be to be involved in a war but not be fighting and and um looks very dark and heavy and and like it's got something to say yeah yeah it has some deep themes i i hear it's really hard too but fun (laughs) uh the final one from the 11 bit studios update is children of morta it's a hack and slash game top down it's got pretty simple graphics but really good and smooth animations neat like particle effects and stuff looks very very rpg heavy um and I think it's a roguelike as well. But this game this game is also right up my alley. This one looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks so, like you said, Zelda-esque, yep. which is really cool. Yeah, and I, I think the whole, the children and the tagline of the game is it runs in the family. I think it's kind of like family finds portal to whatever or something like that. And then when you die, it's like a family member that comes in. Kind of like the way something hmm. like Infinity Blade or uh, Rogue Legacy, kind of how they put that story spin onto the roguelike mentality. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm watching it now. But yeah. That's another one that. for early 2019. Uh, let's see, what's next on the list? We have Everspace, and this is from Rockfish Games. This is another one that's already been released for PC, and it's out for PS4, I think. But... um. Yeah, basically, this one takes place in space. It's fast-paced, roguelike, and it's a shooter, pretty much, like you're in a ship. It seems like it's similar to No Man's Sky, but I don't think you'll be leaving the ship. It just, you'll have, from the footage I could, from what I saw, it looks like you'll actually be in dogfights and trying to take over large frigates and stuff like that, which is cool. I don't know if you noticed this, but when I was watching the clips, the the third person when you're when the camera is behind the ship and you're watching it do its thing versus the first person looked like completely different games to me like almost like it was <laughs> it a different did. maybe mode. it was more cinematic i don't know if it's if you can you if you have to be first person or if you can pull back like that cuz like you said maybe it was more cinematic but yeah um there's this is becoming a growing field of play for a lot of games like you said with no man's sky and then um that game that's coming out in september with star fox starlink starlink battle yeah. for atlas this might be a good precursor to that well it comes out in december so never mind <laughs> <laughs> just by <his> starlink <laughs> yeah that that seems that seems that cool. looks really awesome and that one's made by rockfish games i don't know if we've seen yeah. much else from them Okay, I don't know why people are loving this next one. <laughs> Do you know something I don't know? <laughs> when I watch this, I I, 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 don't, I, I honestly have no words. Yeah? I, I can't tell you. <laughs> so the game is Baba Is You. 
<laughs> and my description is trippy puzzler makes sentences. I have no idea WTF this is, but I'll try <laughs> it. And it comes out in fall. Okay. You want to try to explain it? Whatever you saw in the trailer. So it looks like you, you have a choice between two words and they add together to make something. But if you move one word away, maybe that's how you interact with the environment. Like if you, um, I can't remember what the words are like, maybe there's a word like wall and then if you move the wall the wall goes away and you're like this little is it dog or it's a baba (laughs) (laughs) so you push the words away for your baba Mm -hmm. and then yeah it uh, makes new sentences i guess there's new words you can put in there and it looks like yeah, a it's, Atari game with a few more pixels. Like it is very. I don't know why I thought of ET when I first saw it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just a <laughs> couple of squares that move around a screen. So I don't know. There's a lot. I mean, it's, that was the game that after the video was finished, that was one of the games that I saw the most people saying like, "I've been following this game forever. I'm so excited totally. for it." I don't get it, but I guess I guess we'll see That's when it comes funny. out this fall. Huh. Yeah. Next we have Slay Spire. Slay. This is Slay of the Way. Mega Crit Games, and it's part of a humble bundle, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that, from the looks of it, it looks like another like roguelike, but it's gonna be card based and actually look pretty cool because it had certain nice art style to it. And had the adventure aspects, but like you said, it's a card card based fighting system, and that's gonna it's dated for early 2019. Yeah, so and it's in uh, it's on PC right now in early access, and it's getting oh, okay. it's getting awesome reviews right now. Um, so well, as much as you can review it in early access, but seems like seems like one to keep your eye on for sure. So this is really exciting to people that aren't really me, but. Uh, wind jammers is coming out for the switch on october 23rd this is a this is a uh this is a really exciting or or very beloved um like volleyball but played with frisbee it's an old neo geo game from like 93 or something like that 91 um people seem to really love it there's um there's one podcast group that does like a is it giant bomb that's obsessed with it uh, it could be. Yeah, one of the big. <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong, listeners. Um, but it, it's fun. It's a fun game, but people really lose their mind for it. Um, but in addition to the losing your mind part, they announced Windjammers Two coming out in 2019. Um, a very similar game, better graphics, blah 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 blah. Looks cool. Uh, looking forward yeah. to playing some Windjammers uh, on October 23rd. No doubt. I have it for Vita, and it's loads of fun yeah so you you're so. in the camp that you love it yeah it, it it's like a love letter to those um action titles of the past where it's just fuel few pure sport related skills and over the top mm-hmm. <laughs> is it fun actions. playing single player because if you're playing on the vita you're probably not yeah it's pretty it, 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 it is yeah it is fun to play single player too like the like the opponent your opponents know what they're doing and no, and it's a blast to play with actual people too. Like, um, it's a cross buy between Vita and PS4, mm. and so I played with Eli a little bit, and we've had fun with it. So cool. I'm gonna yeah. guess that you you have some familiarity with this next one, do you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't have much familiar familiarity with it, but um, my um, little guy Eli does. So oh yeah. Maybe I should bring him in. No, wait. It's, it's midnight. midnight and he's asleep <laughs> <laughs> and it's a school day so but i hear that that this is the equivalent to um terraria it's the equivalent to uh minecraft only 2d mm-hmm. so that's what that's I hear your too. thing and it's cool that's coming out because it is very popular for the switch yeah i've so. watched uh i've watched youtube videos about this game a few times and been like okay I see how people get lost in this. Not really for me, but yeah, it's like uh, yeah. Minecraft or SteamWorld Dig or something. I love SteamWorld Dig, but yeah, it's got that mining, diving down forever, and then building Eli, stuff. Yeah, Eli loves it. So, but 
my my kids love Minecraft like games. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Uh, Prison Architect. Uh, surprise, surprise. It is a shadow drop that is now available. Uh, developed by Double Eleven and Introversion Software. This game reminds me of Theme Park. If you ever played any of those games from PC back in the day, or Theme Hospital, or you know those games where it's like kind of like a Sim City, but on a much more confined space. You have to uh, watch over your prisoners. You can be, um, you know, it's a sim. You can you can come down on them with an iron fist and and make money, or you can try to better the prisoners and return them to society and all that kind of stuff. They've got a couple of new modes coming out, so it's got to have uh, future expansions and support. Um, but uh, it's available now, so check it out. It looks neat. Yeah, for those strategy types. And this is another shadow drop that's out today. Bow, Morphe's bow, bow, bow. Law. And this is the one that they hit on at E3, or maybe it was another Nindy Direct, which is, it's a team-based online shooter, okay? So there you can play against bots from what I hear. Um, Cosmoscope, that must be the developer. But it has a Day of the Dead-like look to it. And if you watch gameplay, Pretty much you have teams of three or five or whatever. And then you, as you shoot the opponents, they shrink and you grow bigger. So it gives you sort of a handicap in that, well, the enemy a handicap in that they'll have an easier time hitting you as you grow bigger. But you want to grow big because that means you're winning. So, and I guess you get to a certain point that if enough of your, um, comrades get big enough that you can unleash the super attack from like this big overlooking day of the dead like guy Mm -hmm. (laughs) it looks really out there it's just something you have to watch um early reports from what i can hear though so you might want to wait a few days to pick this up or a few weeks because i hear it's really not running well that's a bummer and yeah uh, I, w- I sort of wish this game was coming out when they were releasing their new online infrastructure sort of deal. Yeah, I mean, because Nintendo's always nailed it with online services. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, maybe so. the, the, some more dedicated resources might help it. Well, we'll check in on yeah. that, especially if it seems like people are loving this game. Um, we'll, we'll hit on it um, in the next episode and see if there's any updates there. Uh, sure. We also got the announcement uh, that A Hat in Time, developed by Gears for Breakfast, is coming out. This game is built as a love letter to Mario 64, which is one of my favorite games. I haven't played it. Have you? No, no. I've heard really good things about yeah, it. Yeah, me too. It's, it's like um, what most people wish ukulele was. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that as well. Um, is that out now or? It is in, uh, maybe in September. From what I so it looks remember. like the PC version is getting a bunch of updates on September 13th. So I wonder if that's when it comes out. Regardless, we're get, most people are just thrilled that we're giving a hat in time. Yeah, and screen. then uh, I uh, Velocity 2X is coming out imminently as well. Um, this is a really fun top-down kind of shoot em up Pure arcade shooter yeah action really fun has a couple of cool hooks um the developer teased or not teased but stated today that they have been trying to develop a sequel for it um and they have not been able to get funding from a publisher uh hashtag nindy struggles and uh <laughs> and so they basically said hey we're putting this game out on the switch today i think it's today or this week and uh, if it sells, then we might be able to make a sequel. And if not, like the the franchise or the series might be just kind of dead in the water. So if you are looking for a good top down arcade shmup, this is definitely one. It's a it's a fantastic game. Um, Josh and I have both played yeah. it on the Vita before. Um, pick it up. Maybe you'll love it. And maybe your support will help them uh, develop the, the sequel to it. And it's great how, you know, these indie developers are finding a place on the switch where their games are actually selling yeah yeah it's like the much last refuge. better mm-hmm. and the thing you forgot to mention Windjammers jammers too that's that's a switch exclusive oh is it at really? least at the beginning wow yeah so that's sort of interesting that it came out for P- playstation and pc before but now it's just switch so mm-hmm. tells you something mm-hmm. um and then finally um this comes out on 
August 30th, The Messenger Ooh, by Sabotage Studio, publisher Devolver Digital. And this is one that we've been hyping for a while. This looks so great because it has that retro art style Ninja Gaiden like look. But then you switch between 8 bit and 16 bit. If you haven't seen it, you probably should just get on see it and watch motion. a video. It's so cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's so and cool. And it changes up gameplay dramatically when you switch, which is really awesome. Yeah. And you can switch on the fly. So Yeah, this game looks awesome. <laughs> it looks so awesome. rad. <laughs> yeah. Until Dead Cells yeah. came out, this was my most hyped game. Well, I guess now that Dead Cells is out, it, it still is my most hyped <laughs> game. So Yeah, it is still. Yeah, yeah, this game looks amazing. And I'm really, I'm a little it's almost upsetting that it comes out on August 30th and we haven't really seen much of a deep dive. Now the developer, they've been making the rounds. I've seen them up on podcasts and YouTube channels specifically this week showing the game off a little bit, but I feel like they've gone kind of quiet over the last couple of months. I mean, they had a big splash at E3, but uh, you know, it's been kind of been for a game that's coming out next week. I feel like I don't know enough about it, but I'm going to get that. I'm going to get it uh, day one. Oh, this yeah, regardless. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh, I know that we got uh, a couple of new games that came out this week with the Shadow Drops. Um, you want to touch on a couple of these, and then we'll get over to the sales and bounce? Well, yes, we hit on Morphe's Law, which came out today. Bad North came out today. And Prison Architect came out today. So you can... Buy those right away now if you want to. Um, Detective Gallo, that comes out soon. It's a um, point-and-click adventure and has a pretty neat art style to it. Like, I get some uh, Curse of Monkey Island vibes from it. So if you're into those type of um, LucasArts type of adventure titles, it's worth checking out. Um, Treadnoughts comes out soon and that's one i've been playing and if you have friends to play with it's fun it's only couch cope you can't play online so that might detract some people but you need friends to play with but if you do it's a blast to play and it's pretty deep i mean you're basically just a tank that can climb walls and <laughs> you know shoot in all directions but <laughs> there's a lot more nuances to the gameplay so i mean and there's a lot to um, love with just that sentence I mean, you're, you're yeah tank, i know you climb walls things shoot up. things hey it sounds cool <laughs> exactly and the next we have persian knight sands of wonder or the fix monday and it's uh from what we can tell jeff and i are very confused but it looks like a point and click game yeah we were so. we were looking at this game on the eShop, and we were like looking through screenshots like what is this game it looks like <laughs> it looks like prince of persia sounds like prince of persia but i think it's a point and click adventure so <laughs> yeah there, so yeah that's there's out there. that and then finally we have spectrum from Digirati distribution and um your description's the best, and that's all I have to say is a little spermy guy swimming around. <laughs> it looks cool, though. I, I It does look cool. I think it might be a mobile game or something that was ported over, but, yeah, it, it looks... It's neat. like a Nihilumbra mm -hmm. that came out for the Switch 2, and that was a mobile game, but it sort of has that same sort of art style yeah. to it. Well, before we jump to the games on sale this week, um, I wanted to see let's 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 make a pick from today's indie video. What uh, what's the one game that you think you're the most excited for on here? The one I'm most excited yeah. for would be between two Windjammers two really? and Monster Boy and the Cursed King. Wow, you you really are it's into so much fun. Yeah, yeah. it's right. it's just a great competitive game to play but yeah like i said monster boy looks amazing too. i mean it looks gorgeous i think i'm probably gonna go with uh one of the two 11-bit studios games either moonlighter or children of morta i think both of those look yeah, really those cool look i think those might be my pick so uh let's see what's uh let's see what's on sale this week games on sale we have rocket league it's 14 dollars now this is like the ultimate indie game that brought indies into the spotlight yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the second coming from minecraft so 
Yeah, you should get on that if you haven't yet. And there's something um, magical about, about playing that game online, like sitting on your couch with the Switch in your hand instead of like being on a oh, console. It's, it's amazing it's what they did with that. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah. It is. Next, we have Blossom Tales. It's $10, 33% off. And this is basically if you're playing The Legend of Zelda and Link was a female. And yeah, it's basically just that. <laughs> it's a love letter to that style of game. Pixel Junk Monsters 2 is 9 bucks and 40% off. This has come out for other platforms, but um, yeah, it's basically, Jeff, you played some of this. It's a strategy or tower yeah. defense title. It's tower. I mean, real. I would say the original Pixel Junk Monsters is the quintessential tower defense game, in my opinion. Uh, if you're going to play anything in that tower defense genre that was so popular wow. back in you know like 2009 or whenever that that genre really started exploding i think pixel junk monsters is the best one i haven't spent much time with the sequel yet but um i would have to assume i i trust uh the pixel junk guys that uh, they make a great game most of their games are great so i i would strongly recommend it sweet Leather Quest Remastered is only $3. That's 75% off. And if you love coming up with words and you love RPG-like style gameplay, this is neat because as you go through like a dungeon, you encounter enemies, and to beat them, you have to come up with the most complex and longest words, and that deals more damage or makes your spells more powerful. So, so it's like... It's a neat little title. It's like almost like the battle system is like Scrabble or something. Yeah, yeah, huh. basically, pretty much. Only, yeah, you get a certain amount of tiles to select words from, sure. and then, yeah, you have to come up with, yeah. That's very cool. Most complex <laughs> scent word you can find, so. Um, next, we have Aqua Kitty UDX. I added this one onto the list. <laughs> 449, 50% off. It looks our type like RPG, and... Yeah, yeah, this is one you look, were pretty excited about, yeah, actually. It, it looks like a side-scrolling, you know, 16-bit shooter, something like R-Type or Life Force or one of those kind of games. Um, but it looks like it has that roguelike or, or RPG elements. Um, uh, I, I, I only looked at this game for a couple of minutes, and I loved it, and think that this might be the game that I pick up this week. So... Check back next week and see if I've played some Aqua Kitty UDX. Yeah, if this isn't the game you pick up, um, the the next one might be, which is Pankapoo, <laughs> and <laughs> that's not a joke. Pankapoo, yeah, whatever. It's eight bucks at thirty three percent off, but we talked about this, and it looks like it has such a great art style yeah it does it looks like an action type of game like dust and elysian tale which that was a very highly favored indie game for xbox and playstation so worth checking out yeah it looks gorgeous strongly encourage it is p-a-n-k-a-p-u um yeah it even touts itself as a classic 90s action platformer so that looks very cool. This you're you're right, Josh. This could be the one I pick up if I don't get Aqua Kitty. Next we have Die for Valhalla, nine dollars twenty five percent off. Um, you looked at this more than I did, so yeah, um, I get a lot of Castle Crashers vibes from it. It's um, it's okay. yeah, it it looks like multiplayer. You've got that kind of slanted 2d thing to it but you know you you hit the enemies it's colorful the numbers pop up above their head you've got little life bars again uh, from all the bad guys you're making it through the levels um i i think this game looks great it looks really really fun i have to look at that again yeah. castle crashers you have me at castle <laughs> crashers so it looks like <laughs> and then finally we have the flame in the flood which is 749 that's 50 percent off and this came out, this has come out for pretty much every platform. And basically, from what I can tell, it's a survival type of game, but there's some action elements to it. Like you're scrounging for materials and you have to make better weapons. And then you go to different islands to do this, but there's always dangers lurking around. So it's, um, I haven't had the plant chance to play it, but it's one I have my eye on. So for that price, it might be worth 
trying out. Yeah, we were talking about that um, like a couple of months ago. You and I trying to figure out if we were going to play it, if one of us was going to. And and uh, yeah, if you get that, let's let's report back. I want to hear about it. Sure. Yeah, it has an awesome theme on the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll take a look at it. Yeah, the free theme from it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what we need. We need themes on the Switch. I would like to have there. themes on the Switch. That wouldn't be bad. I'm too. Well, that's yeah. an absolute ton of games. There are so many <laughs> oh games coming gosh. soon, so many great games on sale. There is no chance that you have a Switch with nothing to play. So <laughs> Yeah, there's no excuse. So please, by all means, play some indie games. Talk to us about it. You can find us on our Facebook page. We are at Nindy Nation. Same thing on Twitter. You can see uh, Josh on Twitter at Minus the Brant and me on Twitter at Nindy Jeff. Um, and of course, you can see uh, all of our content on YouTube, youtube.com slash Nindy Nation. And uh, Josh, tell them about uh, Nintendo Village. Yes, the Nintendo Village. You can find our podcast there, too. And we we share the site with many other great shows. So go there. There's reviews. There's previews. There's art, good good featured articles. Um, if you, there's anything you want to know about Nintendo, it's there. Like I said, they have some good retro podcasts you can listen to. So check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, did we hit on everything already this week, Josh? We had so much stuff to cover, but uh, <laughs> my my brain's on overload yeah, right now. Yeah, it right? is. <laughs> All right, let's see. What what are you going to be spending your time digging into over the next week on your Switch? You, you got any plans yet? I don't know. I think I'm going to leave that up as a surprise. There you go. I'm going to hit some surprise more dead cells, but I do think I got to try out one of these yeah. one of these newer games. Might pick up one of the sales. We'll, we'll see. There you go. But, uh, hey, as always, Josh, thanks for joining us today and chatting about uh, the big drop that we got. Can't wait to look forward to digging deeper into it in the future. But uh, until then, Josh, thanks for joining. I'm Jeff, and we are Nindy Nation, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>